Well, hello everyone. I'm happy to hear that you're getting a good start this week. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, the summer school, as I said before, uh, it can go fast, but uh, Larissa and I have been working hard to uh, make sure that you are uh, in a good position. I myself am traveling right now. I am down in my hometown, and uh, I haven't, uh, for years I hadn't been back to my hometown. And uh, I'm trying to get back to show my sons where I grew up. And one of the things that we found out was that our introductory uh, lecture or guideline lecture on the key assessment family media paper, for some reason, didn't log onto the system. So this is actually quite common in um, when you're doing online education. So I always tell folks, you got to be ready to, um, to re-record uh, just in case something doesn't happen on the system. For some reason, it wasn't on our YouTube system. So not a problem. Not a problem. I've been doing this for a long time and I always tell folks, you know, you're always prepared. Uh, I remember when I first started lecturing and discussing back 20 years ago uh, where our technology was uh, an overhead machine. We, If the overhead machine broke, we figured out a way to, to make it work. Well, we've come a long way since we've had overhead machines, and um, I think uh, it's a lot better. I like, I like uh, all the technology that we have now. So I'm just going to spend the next uh, around 8 to 10 minutes talking about the actual assignment, the key assessment assignment. I think the first thing you need to know is, I always tell students when you're writing papers in the summer, in summer classes, whether they're on line or, excuse me, whether the assignment is, uh, the homework assignment is in a face-to-face -face class in the summer or an online class in this case, is to know that the length, the length of the paper. So make sure that you have five pages, five pages at a minimum. You know, generally students write between five and seven pages. Do not write less than five pages because then you automatically are not eligible to get an A. And so I think the thing for me is, I always tell students, five pages, that does not include the title page and does not include the uh, text. In other words, how many, uh, the, it's five, so it's five pages of text um, and uh, plus a reference page and plus, re uh, plus a title page. So five pages of text, a title page, and a reference page. In other words, if you do the minimum five pages of text, then you're going to end up with seven pages, I always tell students. Now, if you want to write more than five pages of text because you feel like you need to write more on your assignment, that's great. You can write six pages of text, seven pages of text, but remember, minimum five. And of course, you need a title page and you need a reference page. So if you end up writing six pages, you're going to end up with eight pages total. If you end up writing seven pages, I will read seven pages. I do not penalize students for writing more. I would keep it within the five and seven pages of text. Now, what I don't want to see is where students write three pages of text, and then they write a title page, and then they write a reference page, and then there were five pages total. You will lose a lot of points. If the minimum you're under five point, the minimum the the minute you're under five pages, which is the minimum, you can't make an A on the paper. So five pages. Now you're wondering how do what what style of writing? Uh, you're going to use the American Psychological Association, and I briefly discussed this in the intro paper, in the introduction, in the in the introduction lecture. I briefly, uh, I briefly uh, discussed this in the introduction lecture uh, a couple days ago. But what you want to see is um, the American Psychological Association, uh, and there's some really good resources online. And Larissa is also going to provide some feedback for you if you have questions. Remember I said you can write as many drafts as possible. I said, you want to drive, write a draft? Now, you can't turn it in the day before to us and say, okay, would you read our draft? Uh, Lewis and I, would. we want you to turn in drafts with due time so we can read them and give you feedback. So I think the big thing for me is, um, you know, as you're writing it and you complete it, then say, hey, really, can, can you get this, Larissa? Can you look at this, Dr. Ruben? Can you look at this, Dr. Ruben? Can you look at Larissa? And we both can look at it. So I encourage you to write drafts. Remember, one of the big things I always tell students is that often students, they don't, um, they, they don't realize that professionals, including myself, we're always writing drafts. We don't get it done in the first time. Even the president of the United States, as it doesn't matter if we go all the way back to the president of George Washington before he submitted a speech or a report, a draft. And so I tell students, this is a learning experience. This is a positive learning experience because you become a better writer. And so I tell students all the time, um, like myself, I was not a great writer when I first started. And I still say I'm a decent writer. I'm not like, I'm not this star writer that's going to win an award, but I'm a decent writer. 
And at the end of the day, it's because I write drafts. I write drafts. So let's keep it, let's, let's, let's look at writing and writing drafts as a positive thing, not something cumbersome. And so, and because it's a sophomore level class, I kept it within reasonable uh, writing, five to seven pages. Now let me go over the assignment, okay? Now that I've kind of given you the technical aspects, how many pages of text, how many, a reference page, AP style, and in the text also you're using American Psychological Association. Okay, so you have five pages of uh, uh, minimum, and then your title page and your reference page, American Psychological Association. And within the text, you're citing American Psychological Association. What am I citing, you're probably saying? Well, you're going to cite what you've learned in your book. You're going to cite what you've learned in your lectures. Remember I, what I say in the welcome um, that you need to look at and listen. You need to listen to the lectures. You need to listen to our video lectures. And you listen to our audio lectures, whichever we're doing video audio that that week. And, you know, we're doing that video audio that week. And I think the big thing for me is, you know, um, to pass the class successfully. What I consider an A or B, as I said in the intro lecture, you need to you need to listen to the lectures. Do the audios, whether audio or audio lecture because what's going to happen is I'm lecturing about something in chapter 5 and and remember I'm not just lecturing on chapter 5 I have 20 years of experience Larissa has experience we're adding research experience from the from the field we're adding other experiences so it's beyond the book I always tell students it's not good enough to have a class that just focuses on the book and so I think the big thing is um, the big thing is the big thing is that the for me is that if you're doing the lecture uh, and you're you're saying to yourself, okay, uh, you know, the students are going to listen to it, they're going to view it, and they're going to take information from it, and from there, they're going to make a determination if I can use this information for exam one, I can use this extension for exam two, I can use this information for FAMI Media Key Assessment Paper. So look at it that way. Now, I've had students consistently for the last five years that I've taught online that didn't listen to the video lecture and or the audio lecture, depending on what we did. Myself as an individual, or if I had a TA that worked with me, we did it together. And they didn't do well on the exams. And they were missing vital information on their key assessment paper. And what happened was, you know, they'd be like, Dr. Ben, I made a I made a C plus on this the exam. I made a C on the exam. Uh, and I'm like, well, there was all this information that came beyond the book. Now, by all means, you need to read the book. But for this key, for this key assessment paper, and also for the two exams, you do need to read the book, of course. But you also need to listen to the lectures, video lectures, and also audio lectures. And there'll be some times that might assign some extra credit. So you need to make sure you stay on top of this. I know it's four weeks. It's going to go by fast. But you're going to have a lot to do every week. So I always tell students to stay on top of it. Um, one of the best things to do is to follow the, the lectures and obviously your book. Now, with that said, you need to incorporate information from what well, it's. I think students will say, well, what makes an A paper on this uh, family media paper? Obviously, the, the you got to hit the minimum of, of page numbers, uh, pages of text. But it's be way beyond just describing the family. Oh, OK, I'm going to do parenthood. I'm doing Parenthood, uh, the, the series, and I think the big thing for me is, okay, I'm doing Parenthood, the series. That's what I'm writing my paper on. It's not good enough just to describe the family for four pages, three and a half pages, and then throw in two minimum theories and other references from the book. And then guess what? You have to do an additional three references, scholarly references, and you can get plenty of scholarly references uh, from the library. So I tell students all the time, uh, you know, that's not an A paper. An A paper is you describe the family, you describe the family, and I'd say page and a half at the most of describing a family. In this case, I say you pick parenthood. Uh, you pick another family uh, based on a movie. Or remember I told you you go way back old school and you do the Brady Bunch or something. Or I was telling you that my son really likes the show Full House. Well, at the end of the day, if you describe Full House for four for, for, for um, pages and then you just do the theories at the very end, 
in that last page and throwing uh, information from the class and, and the three scholarly references, you're not going to make an A. An A paper is, let's say, full house or, you know, parenthood. You spend a page and a half at most describing the scenario, all right? Or um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air uh, with Will Smith. That one is always used. I see that one all the time. Um, a page and a half of Will Smith and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And let me stretch my arms. Um, you know, and for me, a page and a half is more than enough. And most students can get it done in a page, but a page and a half of the script of the scriptures of who the characters are what the show is about or what the movie is about that's more than enough then the remaining part of the paper let's say you end up writing the five page paper the three and a half pages that's when you're tying the two theories and you have to use at least two family theories or a combination of the family theory and ecological theory that's covered in the class a lot of this information is in the textbook and yes a lot of this information is covered in my lectures and so the remaining pages are using the theories, two theories, and not just three sentences of a short paragraph on the, on, I've seen this, I saw this last summer. I saw students literally write a paragraph and a half on the two theories. No, you got to blend. It's like a thread. You're telling a story on parenthood or a full house or fresh pencil braille there or a movie. And you're blending the theory to help tell the story in those three pages or four pages if you write a six page paper or more if you write the seven page paper. So two theories at a minimum. Now, I always tell students, especially an online class, these things are you gotta keep in mind as you're writing your papers. I know how many how long I gotta write the paper. I know the writing style, which is APA style. I know how many theories I need to use. Now the next thing is you need to use um, at least three scholarly references. And I and I strongly encourage them, you know, go to the library system and you can do it online. And you can find three scholarly references that are going to help you. And when I mean scholarly references, I don't mean like Time Magazine or a newspaper. I mean a journal that's been approved uh, and has had the rigor. We call them technically Americans, uh, excuse me, uh, peer-reviewed journals. And so you're reviewing, you're writing this um, paper, and you know you know what you need to write. Blend what you're learning from class, of course, and you and when you say you can say in Dr. Ruben's lecture, he talked about ecological theory, he talked about family theory. Okay, sure, blend it. You're gonna lecture, you're gonna cite that, you know, it's lecture one, uh, you know, family diversity lecture one, Dr. Ruben, but I'm saying, yeah, I know, lecture one, summer 2016. I'm okay with that as long as you cite APA style. Now, but if you find a reference in the journal Marriage and the Family or Family Relations, and if you need, you know, you need to cite that appropriately in American Psychological style. And what you can do is, and I'm going to have Larissa, because this is what I did when I was a student, is I would help the students with the writing style, with the American Psychological Association writing style. It was a good lesson for me because as a student, when I was, because Larissa, one of these days, is going to be a professor, I said it, as I said in the introductory lecture. She needs to learn this as she's going along. And so Larissa will help you with how to cite the American Psychological Association. So you find a reference from, and I'll give you an example here. Smith and Jones does a reference. Uh, Smith and Jones and Gonzalez write this reference on Latino families. And let's say you did yours on the movie Mi Familia. That one comes up all the time, Mi Familia. And, uh, or they use a reference from Gonzalez and, and Sanchez. Well, you don't just say Gonzalez and Sanchez. You say Gonzalez and Sanchez, 2002 found that Latino families, this, this, and this. That's very much the American Psychological Association style. But don't worry about that. Larissa can help you if you're struggling. And there's a lot of resources online. Uh, what I'm going to recommend is the Purdue, like the University, uh, Purdue University, the Purdue Owl, like the actual bird, Purdue Owl. Um, they do a lot of good, uh, have a lot of online tutorials on how to use American Psychological Association APA style. Okay. Well, folks, this is actually an exciting uh, assignment I've always found fun the students actually enjoy it because they can they can really blend what they have learned it's not an opinion paper folks it's not an opinion paper where you fight five pages of opinion I want to see you blending class I want to see you blending uh, the textbook you are definitely gonna have to have those three scholarly references because that's required and I want to see you blending the theory so 
Yes, you get to pick the show. And yes, you get to describe the show. Full House, Fresh Prince, Mi Familia. Um, you know, like I said, um, uh, uh, you know, oh, before I forget, you definitely have to have the topic approved. You have to have the topic approved. You can't just write it and say, well, this is the topic I picked. No, you have to have the topic approved by myself. And so what well, you will be sending me the topics and, and, and you know, you say, hey, Dr. Ben, this is the topic I picked. I picked Full House or I picked Me Familia or I picked another show. Um, and then I'll approve it. And so in that first page and a half, you can be creative in how you describe the cast and everything or the movie and what happens in the movie. Remember, it's not a... It's not a critique of a movie. There's the major difference. This is not film studies, okay? And uh, don't get me wrong, my colleagues in film studies do a great job, but this is not a five-page, seven-page critique of a film. No. In that first page and a half, you're describing the characters. You're kind of bringing them together and who they are. And then you're using the theories, two theories, and you're using what you learned in class and in class lectures, video or audio. And then you're using those three scholarly references to kind of bring in, you're telling a story. It's not necessarily a critique. It is a difference. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and I brought this up before, is if you did a film critique in another class um, before this, and be careful if you use the same film. I always tell students, I know it's a busy time. Maybe you got a job and you're doing this online class because you want to get a class done in the summer. It can be very tempting to use the same film you did for another class for Dr. Smith or another professor in another department on campus or when you were at the community college and before you transferred here. I always recommend to students, I recommend you use a different film or a different show because you never know if it's going to be too close to what you already did. And um, I strongly recommend it because there is that fine line between uh, on the honesty policy. And, um, you know, we definitely don't want you to go down that road. I always tell students, use a different film. Uh, I know it's a busy time in the summer. Uh, it's fun. The summer's fun. I was a student also. Larissa was a student also as an undergrad. But I say, I say, you don't want to be in that gray area. Use a different film. And especially because in another film, you did really well in another class, you made an A, A, A minus, whatever. And it's so close that we would have to, by university rules, say you use the same assignment from another class and then you start getting issues of the honesty policy. So I tell students, use a different film and we're good to go. I think you're gonna enjoy this assignment. Last summer, the students really enjoyed it. Um, we had really interesting examples of films last summer and shows. Um, some students asked me last summer if they could do um, uh, in my case, some of the students ask because I, I am bilingual and I do teach the bilingual HDFR also classes. Uh, can I use a can I do a, a show in Spanish, Doctor Ben? Can I do a show a movie in Spanish? Of course, because I understand it and that's one of our uh, concentration areas. If you pick a show that's a Spanish bilingual show or you pick a movie, just let me know when you say, Hey, Doctor Ben, I'm going to do this film. This is a bilingual film. Um, you can, of course, but that's Spanish English. I'm not. I'm not Russian and English. I'm, my apologies, folks, or French and English. Uh, you know, we'll keep it to English. And then if you want to do a bilingual show, a Spanish-English show, then that's great. Well, listen, again, um, we, want, we want to make sure you're okay. This is why I did this descriptor. Uh, you do have the guidelines on the system. Uh, verbatim what I just said. I just added those key things that professors and instructors always need to do about what to look for. You know, uh, drafts, folks. I want to do with drafts. Write drafts, folks. I'll read them. Larissa will read them. We'll both read them. Okay. Thanks a lot. And I look forward to uh, seeing your first set of papers. And first of all, I like to, I look forward to seeing your first your first topic. Uh, seeing what topic you're going to write for the key assessment family media. Thank you.